Je vais vous parler de l'équation de I'm Kaya. C'est l'équation, on porte le nom de... Equation cette équation porte le nom de... It's called Kaya, after a Japanese economist who in the 90s wanted to identify determining parameters for greenhouse effect gas emission, especially carbon dioxide. Yoshi Kaya started from a simple observation. He said, okay, CO2 emissions equals CO2 emissions, a very simple equation. But he was very clever and he divided and multiplied the right-hand side uh, member with the same term to keep the equality and he introduced or rather allowed new parameters to appear. He divided the right-hand side term with the first parameter, tons of oil equivalent, TOP, and multiplied it again with TOP. The tons of equi oil equivalent is an energy unit that is used to compare processes uh, of uh, energy production. And by doing this, he created a new parameter the ratio CO2 on TOP, CO2 on TOP, sorry. And he did it several times until he had four main parameters. So let's move on. And you will understand what these parameters are at the end of the equation. If we multiply and divide by uh, GDP, the GDP or PIB in French, is the uh, gross domestic, domestic product of the country you want to study. And it gives you an idea of the country's wealth. It may be expressed in dollars. And the last term is uh, POP, the population. So we divide and multiply by the population or the number of inhabitants. This is the final equation. And we now have four terms in the equation. And obviously, we still have exactly the same thing on both sides of the equation. The new term is a new parameter, CO2 over ton of oil equivalent. And if we wanted to express units, we would have grams or tons of uh, emissions in the atmosphere expressed in tons of oil equivalent per day. What does this represent? It represents the rate of uh, greenhouse effect emissions which will be released in the atmosphere when we use or spend energy. This is what we can call energy-induced disturbance. The second term, TOP by PIB or GDP, is the quantity of energy per GDP. We may uh, use uh, a unit such as TOP per dollar. It is equivalent to the quantity of energy needed to guarantee the country's wealth, pure wealth, comfort, or services in the country. The third term, GDP on population, could be expressed in dollars per inhabitant, and this exemplifies the purchasing power. The last term is not a ratio, it's just a population. We have four different terms in Kaya's equation, and the, the equation is interesting because it brings together several fields, economy, purchasing power, demography, population. When we talk about uh, energy-induced disturbance, we're talking about physical, physical chemistry or thermodynamics. And finally, energetic intensity depends on yield or technology. This is the Kaya's equation that you're looking at. And how can we use it? How can one use it? We know that in 2050, if uh, one wants to limit the uh, global warming to 2 degrees Celsius, it is necessary to divide by 3 the CO2 released in the atmosphere. This is the objective, and uh, one may use Kaya's equation to understand which parameters we can play with to try and re reduce the CO2 emissions. We'll start from the end. We'll, we need to divide all the terms by three, population. Well, of course, you can't really divide the population by three. It's just unheard of. Well, we could limit the number of births, there could be a natural disaster or a war or an epidemic, but otherwise I don't see how we could possibly reduce the population. However, we do know that by 2040, the population will be multiplied by 1.6. 
So the uh, 1.6 population increase will need to be applied to the other factors. Three times 1.6 is approximately five, so we need to divide all the other members by a factor of five. Purchasing power. If uh, you were told you, you need to divide your purchasing power by five in the coming years, that would be a very unpopular decision. Populations really re normally want to in increase their purchasing power by 2% every year rather than the other way around, which means uh, multiplication uh, of 2.2 uh, uh, between now and 2040. And we need to apply this to the other parameters. The two remaining parameters will be divided by a factor of approximately 10 to reach our objective energy-induced disturbance and uh, energy intensity. If you look at history, ever since the 70s, uh, disturbance, energetic disturbance has been stagnating. The intensity of energy has been reducing uh, until the 70s and stagnating uh, recently. How do we reduce those two parameters? Say we want to reduce the two parameters by a factor of 10. It means that uh, for each parameter with a factor of 3, this is the way the curves should look between now and 2005. This is obviously not what we're currently doing. And in order to decrease energy-induced uh, disturbance, CO2 divided by a ton of oil equivalent, we need to completely change our energy mix. We need to use a kind of energy with a, a less co carbon-based energy, so green energy should be used. And the fast, last parameter, energetic uh, intensity, can be improved either by improving the yield of uh, energy-producing processes or by developing uh, a notion such as energetic sobriety.